Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar for the Punctual Aging Summit. My name is Dr. Cody Seit. I'm the uh, co-founder and vice president of the Functional Aging Institute. And I'm just really excited today to introduce you to someone that I've been following for a couple of years now uh, and really respect in this area, and that's Dr. Michael Greger. So, Dr. Greger, thank you for being here. You are so welcome. I can't wait for the summit. Yeah, we're excited. I love it that you're walking on your treadmill while we're doing this. Of course. Sitting's awesome. not good for you. Yeah. So this is a, just a great opportunity for those of you that don't know uh, Dr. Greger and haven't followed his work. Um, he's been prolific in the, the past, well, shoot, when did you start Nutrition Facts now? Uh, 2011, so uh, nine years. Wow. So it's been a long time. And I really just kind of started following you the past three. So I don't know how many videos you have up now, but there's a lot of videos. Thousands now. Thousands. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, we, we want to introduce, especially to our trainers, we get a lot of questions about nutrition. You know, what, what should older adults be eating? There's, there's all sorts of different dietary plans that are promoted uh, for health. There's, you know, low carb and keto and uh, just everything in between. So... Dr. Greger, why don't you just kind of fill us in a little bit, let everybody get to know you a little bit, tell us just a little bit about your background, and then also about what you're doing through nutritionfacts.org. Yeah, so um, my story actually starts with my grandmother. Uh, I was uh, just a kid when my grandma was sent home in a wheelchair to die. She was diagnosed with end-stage heart disease. She had been cut open enough for uh, bypass surgery, basically run out of plumbing at some point, get so scarred up inside, confined in a wheelchair, crushing chest pain. Her life was over at age 65. Mm. But then she heard about this guy, Nathan Pritikin, one of our early lifestyle medicine pioneers. And what happened next is actually detailed in Pritikin's biography. He talks about Francis Greger, my grandmother. Uh, they wheeled her in and she walked out. In fact, after a few weeks, she was walking 10 miles a day um, and uh, though she was given a medical death sentence at age 65, thanks to a healthy diet, was able to enjoy another 31 years on this planet until age 96 to continue to enjoy her six grandkids, including me. So that's why I went into medicine. That's why I uh, specialize in lifestyle medicine. That's why I wrote the book, How Not to Die, and, and why all the proceeds from all my books are all donated to charity. I just want to do for everyone's family what Pritikin did for my family. Yeah, that's amazing. So how did that, as a physician, how did that transition into founding nutritionfacts.org? And tell everybody a little bit about that as a resource. Yeah, so uh, nutritionfacts.org is a free, nonprofit, science-based public service providing you know, daily updates on the latest in uh, nutrition research, more than uh, 2,000 videos now on nearly every aspect of healthy eating with new videos and articles posted nearly every day. Uh, there are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. Just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute uh, to my grandmother, really. Um, so it's the latest in evidence-based nutrition, uh, nutritionfacts.org. And that's really how it came about, is this is the resource I wish I had in medical school. I mean, to answer simple questions, you know, I ask, my, my patients would ask me all the time, should I take a multivitamin or not? You know, should I, I mean, just basic questions. And I hadn't been taught any of this in medical school. I was like, wow, I wish there was a site that just cut through all the, the BS, all the commercial corruption, um, all the conflicts of interest, all the, you know, and just be like, well, what does the best available balance of evidence say? Like, what does the science say to answer really these basic questions? And so, you know, I figured, look, if this resource didn't exist, well, then I just have to make it. And so now, um, uh, where, uh, you know, I started on my own, but now we have 14 staff and we're a 501c3 nonprofit and we're, you know, uh, kind of a Wikipedia model, basically everything's free, but if, you know, if you appreciate the site, and, um, you know, even if I, you know, we reach so many million people that, uh, you know, if, if one in a thousand people kicks in a few books, bucks, we're like totally fine. And, uh, so, um, we're really excited to be able to bring this life changing, life saving information to so many people. Yeah, I know. I access your, your site and your video all the time. It's such a great resource. I mean, I, I must have watched probably four videos just yesterday alone because I was researching right. specifically some stuff on the Mediterranean diet as it compares. Oh, interesting. Yeah, 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 sure. Components. I've been getting questions about. Uh, so great resource. Definitely recommend that everybody go take a stroll through that. Pick a topic that's interesting to you or that you're struggling with or, or a loved one is struggling with. Type it in. You probably got some good science-based information on there for sure. 
So tell us a little bit about the diet that saved your grandmother and the diet that you recommend. So this is a diet um, that minimizes the intake of meat, eggs, dairy, and processed junk and maximizes the intake of fruits, vegetables, legumes, your beans, split peas, chickpeas, lentils, whole grains, nuts and seeds, mushrooms, herbs and spices, basically real food that grows out of the ground from fields, not factories. Um, these are our healthiest choices. So a diet centered around whole plant foods. Now look, it doesn't matter what you eat on your birthday, holiday, special occasions, but on a day-to-day -day basis, we really should try to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And so why did you come to that conclusion? Like, why do you feel like that's so powerful for health and longevity? Oh, well, so, I mean, that's the only, for example, that's the only diet ever been proven to reverse heart disease in the majority of patients, a plant-based diet, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery, no other diet been able to show, to do what a plant-based diet has done. And this goes back as far as 1990 with Dr. DeMarcia's famous uh, lifestyle heart trial proven with something called quantitative angiography that indeed you could open up um, arteries with a healthy enough diet, a plant-based diet and lifestyle program. Um, and so, look, I mean, if that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the number one cause of death of men and women. I mean, <laughs> should that going to be the default diet to improve another one? And the fact that it can also be so effective in preventing, arresting, reversing other leading killers like you know, type 2 diabetes and, and high blood pressure would seem to make the case of plant-based eating, you know, really simply overwhelming at this point. Yeah, I feel like this is so important because like what we do as trainers, we're really trying to extend functional lifespan and, and add years, but also add ability, add life to those years uh, yeah. in a sense. And for so long, I just feel like we've neglected the nutritional component, that side of things. And again, in fitness, it's all over the place, you know, and, and just general public, it's all over the place. So one thing that you mentioned that, that I think is really interesting, why did you not get taught this information when you were going through your medical training? Why aren't physicians more up to speed on these topics? Yeah, you know, doctors have a severe nutrition deficiency in education. Most doctors were just never taught about the role healthy nutrition can have in the course of illness. So they graduate without this powerful tool in the medical toolbox. Of course, there's also institutional barriers as well. Uh, you know, there are time constraints and lack of reimbursement. Uh, you know, in general, the doctors simply aren't paid for counseling their patients on how to take care of themselves. Of course, look, there are, you know, uh, drug companies also play a role in, uh, in influencing medical education and practice. And you can ask your doctor when the last time they were taken out to dinner by Big Broccoli. It's uh, probably been a while. Yeah, yeah. My son is actually in undergrad. He's in pre-med. He's uh -huh. interested in, in becoming a physician, but he's also volunteering, right? He's getting some hours at a, at a local facility. Sure. Um, and the doctor I really like, he's a friend of mine, very much in, in the lifestyle and how important that is. Right. But it was so funny because just last week, he got a free lunch funded by the drug company that was coming of course to woo them. Of course. And do you think they do that for nothing? I mean, do you think they? Do you think drug companies are in the business of just wasting money for nothing? No, it actually affects prescribing habits. It actually affects the way uh, doctors practice medicine. Uh, there is no free lunch. Yeah, for sure, definitely. So, in looking at this whole food, plant-based eating pattern, so you mentioned cardiovascular disease and diabetes, but what about cancer? Because cancer is certainly right our number two killer. It seems to be on the rise. Can that have any impact on the progression or regression even of certain cancers? Yeah, so after Dr. Dean Ornish uh, conquered our number one killer, heart disease, he moved on to killer number two, cancer. So he put a group of men with early stage prostate cancer on the same diet that reversed heart disease and for the first time ever showed reversal in the progression of cancer. And so in the uh, regular diet group, which was told to just eat whatever diet the doctor told them to, the cancer continued to progress, to enlarge. The tumors kept getting larger, as cancer tends to do. Whereas the plant-based diet group, on average, tumors actually shrank. Tumors got smaller um, over time. First time ever a diet's been able to show to do that. We also have a breast cancer survival data. Um, uh, and so, uh, uh, and actually, interestingly, uh, Ornish is now moving on to killer number four, Alzheimer's, and mm -hmm. is now doing a randomized uh, uh, controlled trial of the same diet, a plant-based diet, for in hopes of trying to reverse the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Now that takes some chutzpah. 
Wow, yeah. Good for him, but uh, we don't have any results yet, but uh, stay tuned. Yeah, when will that trial be completed, do you think? Well, I mean, even after the trial is completed, you know, they, they got to churn through the data, they have That's to publish it. It's going to be a while, but I will yeah. definitely do a video about it, even though I'm skeptical they're going to get the kind of uh, positive results that uh, they're aiming for. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So when we think about kind of a whole food plant-based diet, you mentioned, you know, reducing animal sources, increasing whole food plant-based sources. How does that compare? Like, how would you describe that as when we think about the typical terms of vegan and vegetarian and all the different forms of vegetarian? Oh, where does that yeah, fit yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, labels like vegetarian or vegan, I mean, as a physician, that just tells me what you don't eat. Right. I mean, uh, I, uh, there's lots of vegan foods that are terrible for you, like potato chips and, and Coca-Cola. And I mean, so, I mean, you can eat a terrible diet. Right. Um, so that's why I prefer the term, you know, whole food, plant based nutrition. Oh, you actually eat vegetables. Oh, you actually eat. You, you center your diets around the healthiest foods out there. You know, calling yourself vegetarian is like calling yourself a, a no twinkie -itarian. Like, OK, it's great that you don't eat Twinkies, but like. What else do you eat? Like, it doesn't really give you a lot of information about the quality of someone's diet. Mm -hmm. And do you think the power of the diet comes from more of the intake of fruits and vegetables or the avoidance of the animal-based products? Or is it a combination? Well, it's just a No, no. Well, I mean, it is a combination. But if you look at the Global Burden of Disease Study, which is the largest study of uh, risk factors for disease in history, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, not only is the number one cause of death in the United States, the American diet, now bumping tobacco smoking to number two, cigarettes only kill about a half million Americans every year, whereas our diet kills many more, also a leading cause of disability. I'm talking about functional lifespan. Um, but, uh, and so, okay, well, what is it about the American diet? And um, although the number one dietary risk factor sodium intake is getting too much of something, too much sodium. I uh, found in both table salt and particularly added to processed foods. The other four out of five are things you're not getting enough of. So if you think like, what's the worst thing about the American diet? It's not that we're drinking too much soda or eating processed meat or all these other horrible things for you. But number one is um, uh, getting too much sodium. But the other four, not getting enough fruits, not getting enough vegetables, not getting enough nuts and seeds. Um, and not getting enough whole grains. So those are the five worst things about our diet. So it's really, we're not getting enough of the good foods, um, but uh, you know, naturally when you eat good foods, you're crowding out some of the less healthful options. Awesome. Well, I, I wanna kind of give a plug for your awesome book, How Not to Die, which I'm actually leading a class of the same name right now for people in the community. Yeah, oh, my, my wife asked, man, that's a terrible name for a class. Why did you put it that way? I was like, blame Dr. Gregor. It's, that, it's all me. I'll take full credit. It, but it turns heads. You know, it captures attention. I love that because yeah. first yeah, rule yeah. of living a long life is don't die, right? <laughs> <laughs> that certainly helps. <laughs> okay. Well, also, so let's kind of shift a little bit because I also have your most recent book of ah. diet, right? So yeah. this is kind of your, your full scale investigation into weight loss. And so with us as fitness professionals, we deal a lot with that. It's a lot yeah. of based on weight loss and yeah. weight loss is the target for even up more than health. You know, people are more concerned about how they look and how they feel about themselves than their health even. So what is different potentially about the, the food choices we make or using a whole food plant-based diet for optimal health versus for weight loss? What are some of your tips that you found in your, in your research? Yeah, with, you know, so much nutritional noise and nonsense these days, I just wanted there to finally be an evidence-based diet book. And I said literally thousands of studies digging up every possible, you know, tip, trick, tweak, technique proven to accelerate the loss of body fat, to give people every possible advantage and basically, uh, you know, build the optimal weight loss solution from the ground up. Um, and it turns out that the, the healthiest, single healthiest diet also appears to be the most effective diet for weight loss. This was the broad study out of New Zealand published in 2017 in the Nature Journal um, that showed the greatest weight loss ever recorded um, at six months and 12 months compared to any other comparable trial in the, in, published in the peer-reviewed medical literature that didn't res, uh, restrict calories or enforce exercise. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's been put to the test and shown to be the best. And it's also, you know, safe, sustainable, healthy, um, uh, nutritious, um, and so, yeah, the first half of the book, I talk about the 17 optimal weight loss criteria to look at any diet, 
Yeah. Um, some diets are better than others, and you can go through the criteria, uh, conclude what the optimal diet is. And then the second half of the book is really looking at you know, how can you accelerate the loss of body fat, regardless of what you eat the rest of the time. And that's my 21 tweaks um, uh, to kind of go along with my daily dozen. So things like, you know, uh, uh, not eating after 7 p.m., you know, because of our circadian rhythms, food eaten at night is more fattening than the exact same food eaten earlier in the day. So the fewer mm. calories after sundown, the better. You know, things like that, um, that, you know, regardless of what you eat the rest of the time can help you lose weight. So you can eat a whole food plant-based diet and not be scared of carbs and not be scared of grains and still lose weight. And not even be uh, scared of calories or portion yeah. sizes. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. Um, so, uh, you know, it's this concept of calorie density. Some foods have more calories per mouthful, per stomachful, per cup, per pound than others. Um, and some foods are just impossible to overeat, right? So like, to get 2,000 calories of, you know, strawberries, for example, you'd have to eat 44 cups of strawberry. Like that's 11 stomachfuls. Like as much as I like berries, I couldn't fill my stomach to yeah. bursting 11 times a day. Like, I mean, you know, so some foods, are, you know, impossible to overeat. You physically couldn't eat enough even to maintain your weight. So that's why, so a whole food plant-based diet, you can eat more food and still lose weight. So there's a famous um, uh, study by Sherry, uh, um, uh, uh, by Terry Shintani out of uh, Hawaii uh, that put people on more a traditional Hawaiian diet with all the whole plant foods they could eat, fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains. They lost 17 pounds in 21 days eating more food. Um, on average, about four pounds of food a day, which is about 25% more what Americans eat. More food, yet a uh, massive weight loss. So you have people eat, you know, eat as many, you know, um, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans as they want, and they eat about 50% fewer calories than they uh, might have otherwise. So you say, wait a second, how can you keep people satisfied slashing a thousand calories out of their daily diet? Well, you do it by eating more high bulk, low calorie density foods, fruits, vegetables, uh, you know, legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, lentils, whole grains, and fewer, you know, calorie dense foods like meats, cheeses, sugars, and fats. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you the question that has got to drive you crazy right? Number one question about whole food plant-based diet. Dude, where do you get your protein, right? I mean, don't you face that every time you have this conversation? Any, anyone I know that's what people are thinking right now. Yeah, yeah. Any, anytime, uh, <laughs> you know, anyone who doesn't know how to get protein on a plant-based diet doesn't know beans, <laughs> yep. right? Beans, chickpeas, spitpeas, lentils. So these are the plant protein superstars. And that's why one of the reasons I encourage people to eat them in my daily dozen checklist of all the healthiest of health foods, I encourage people to eat in those daily diets. So not only beans every day, but berries every day, the healthiest foods, greens every day, the healthiest vegetables, mm -hmm. a tablespoon of ground flaxseed, quarter teaspoon of turmeric, uh, you know, best sweeteners, best uh, the beverages, how much exercise to get every day. Basically kind of, you know, just to inspire people to include some of the healthiest of healthy foods in their daily diet. And uh, available as a free app, iPhone and Android called Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen. Yeah, and that's that's a great resource. Not only does it have the daily dozen as a checklist, but it connects right to your videos, right? Oh, so you, yeah, can go, yeah, yeah. you can get all this content on on anything right on your phone very easily. Right. So yeah, I recommend that recommend that to everybody as a resource. So right. what what are some of the other what what kind of the, some of the other common barriers that you know, especially uh, uh, from fitness professionals, eating other types of way, you know, really eating high protein, especially lean protein. I got to eat lean chicken breasts and tuna every single day. Right got to ditch the carbs and in order to get cut, that sort of thing. What, what are some, kind of some of the common misconceptions, myths, or, you know, things that people come up with that you Yeah. Think so, well, good? that's one of them, right? Yeah. This concept that protein is the most satiating macronutrient is simply not true. And so even a, in a review supported by the meat, dairy, and egg industries, they had to admit that the protein intake does not cut down on subsequent calorie intake. And that's all you care about. People say they feel full, um, so on subjective questionnaires, but then, you, you know, four hours later at the next meal, they don't eat a, a single calorie less. So, I mean that, so in terms of weight loss, it doesn't help. Um, but you eat a fiber rich whole grain for supper. You can significantly cut down calorie intake 12 hours later at lunch the next day, because by then mm -hmm. your good gut bugs are feasting on that same prebiotic bounty and yeah. churning out these so-called short chain fatty acids that cross the blood brain barrier, or dial down your appetite. So you eat 100 fewer calories 12 hours later, you feel just as full, 100 calories quicker because of the whole grains you ate the day before. Um, and so that, I mean, talk about satiety, that's the way, um, uh, a solution for long-term weight loss. Mm -hmm. Any other issues that you typically have to deal with with people trying to get them on board? 
Oh my God, all up and down. I mean, look, people love to hear good news about their bad habits. Socially, it's difficult. You know, holidays, you know, family. It's a very kind of personal uh, thing. But look, if it wasn't life and death important as to what to feed ourselves and our family, then, you know, okay. But I mean, it really is. Uh, the, most decision, the most important decision we can make in terms of health and longevity is what's at the end of our fork. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's so critical and something that we just, there, there's just so much money to be had I think in the food industry and in the diet industry. That's the problem is, is we think we're going into things unbiased and we really aren't, you know, even I have to check myself all the time on these influences from media and, and even things like, Hey, you gotta, you gotta drink milk to have strong bones, right? Milk has calcium. You gotta have calcium yet. There's really no research to support that and probably the opposite, correct? Well, yeah, so if you do meta-analyses, so there's absolutely no benefit in terms of hip fracture risk um, from milk consumption. Um, uh, and right, I mean, this is the, it's very difficult to differentiate just the marketing um, mm -hmm. from actual science, right? That, so that, I mean, that's just a marketing ploy. If you look at actual science, it just simply evaporates. So that's why you really need to make decisions as life and death important as uh, like what to eat based on the best available balance of evidence. And that's what we try to do at Nutrition Facts of the Rule. That's awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate your science-based approach. That's what very a concept. Oh my gosh. I know. It's just, it's, it's so important to me because one, I teach research methodology to our students and I'm like, I, uh, you, got, you got to stick to that. You got to perfect, stick to be strong perfect. Your evidence. Right. No, you know, it's amazing. You know, you'll hear, I'm sure you have clients all the time. You ask them what they eat, and then they tell you, say, well, and you, you dig a little deeper, and you're like, well, why do you eat that way? And people will be like, well, you know, someone at the gym told me about it, or, you know, some checkout aisle magazine or something. It's like, what? I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, if you're making a decision like, uh, you know, what the, which toaster to buy or something, okay, well, then the, you know, the random comments of strangers might be right. useful to you. But when we're talking about the health and well-being of yourself and your family, the most critical information, if there's any decision to make based on evidence, that should be the one. That's it. I agree. Well, I really thank you spending time with us and really look forward to your session at the summit and hopefully spending a little bit more time with you as well. I want to encourage everybody how not to die, how not to diet, two great evidence-based scientific resources uh, that one, you should go out and buy right now. And if you don't, if you wait, we're going to have them on sale at the summit too. So we, we want to take advantage of the opportunity. So thank you, Dr. Gregor. It's been great chatting with you. I appreciate you spending some time with us. Looking forward to summit, to, to seeing everyone face-to-face. Uh, -face. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you.